The title of this video is The Main Themes of the April 8th Solar Eclipse 2024. So in this video I will talk about what this eclipse is actually about psychologically, spiritually and astrologically. Of course there's more than enough videos online so if you're watching this this is not going to be your standard mainstream like uh, this is blah, blah blah kind of hyping of the solar eclipse. Neither is it going to be a doomsday prophecy. Neither is it going to buy into superstition of stay in your home, don't do anything. You know, this is actually a scientific and psychological explanation of what this eclipse is actually about. Now, if you're new to, to my channel and you don't know who I am, my name is George Verbena. I'm an astrologer who uses psychology, who uses somatic embodiment and de-armoring therapeutic practices to explain astrology in a certain framework which is useful in a therapeutic setting. So if you never went into a psychological astrology reading before, this is really what my channel is about. So if I do a prediction on an event, it's going to be a psychological thing. Like I'm not going to tell you about some woo woo shit. This is scientific. So if you're interested in exploring the shadows, which are highlighted during a certain event, then please like my channel and subscribe because that's what we're talking about here. So in this video, I will talk about the fundamental key themes of this April eclipse. Now to prepare for this, I made a little list of all the things that you need to be aware of if you want to understand this eclipse. So first of all, what is actually a solar eclipse? A solar eclipse is a darkening of the sun and the sun represents the self. Now, of course, the self is not going to be darkened itself. It's going to highlight the ego and how the ego is getting in the way. So if we're talking about an eclipse, which is basically a period of darkness, we're talking actually about uh, an approximately 28 day period because this eclipse starts on the new moon before the full moon lunar eclipse. Now, scientifically speaking, 14 days before the lunar eclipse on March 25, this cycle has already started. Because everything in astrology happens in cycles. So 14 days before the eclipse, things started to get into motion to prepare for this event, which is going to climax during the 8th of April, but it already was going through a shedding or a purge during the lunar eclipse. Because the difference between the lunar eclipse, which happened on March 25, and the solar eclipse on April 8th is that lunar is about shedding, letting go, releasing, exposing. So anything happening in a 14 day period after the lunar eclipse is going to be a shedding. And within a 14 day period after the solar eclipse, after April 8th until the next full moon, is going to be a new beginning. It's going to be a change of character, a change of scenery. It's like you go from one land into the next. So in order to go for this transition, you have to meet certain requirements, certain prerequisites. And all of these requirements will be met during this eclipse period. So there's actually a very computer like, like a mechanical thing, like you're going into a video game and there are certain parts of the quest that you need to fulfill in order to complete it. And that's essentially what an eclipse is about. So everybody is invited into the party. Everybody is participating in like in the World of Warcraft battle raid. If you don't know what a battle raid is, basically you are inviting a whole lot of people to go together into a dungeon and it's so you can defeat certain monsters. Once you defeated those monsters, you get certain items as rewards. However, 
if the members of your battle rate are too weak, then you're not going to get through the dungeon and you're going to fail the quest. This is very important to understand. So not everybody is going to benefit from the eclipse at the same rate. Because some people, sorry not sorry, are too psychologically weak or they are too badly equipped. They don't have enough experience. Their weapons are blunt. <laughs> like they're just, you know, not in a good state in order to actually get something good, something positive out of it beyond the experience of this hasn't worked out. I need to get get out of this dungeon because this is out of my ball game. And this is why this eclipse is going to split people into two groups. One group of people will be shedding certain karmic experiences and karmic relationships, while the other group of people will be the karmic people who are being shed. And whoever is responsible for the karma, these are the people who are not equipped to fulfill the quest. So these are the people who are going to be left behind by the other group of people who are winning the quest. Now, if you don't like this, if you are a love and light bypassing person, if you don't like the fact that we are living in a world of duality in which we are winners and losers, then my channel is not for you. So then, so then you should cut it out now because I'm not going to cater to some kind of psychological defense mechanisms which some people have created in order to shield themselves from a ruthless, hostile and quite frightening and dangerous reality. Because most people don't like reality and that's essentially going to be the reason why they fail during this eclipse. So, let's go through the fundamental themes that this eclipse is about. So, for this I made a little list. First of all, the eclipse is a Sun-Moon conjunction at exactly 19 degrees of Aries. And the 19th degree of Aries is conjunction Chiron, the wounded healer. This is an exact conjunction. In astrology, this, this transit is actually called a Kazimi. A Kazimi happens once every year or in a certain cycle in which the Sun makes an exact conjunction with a certain object in the sky. Now it's going to be conjunction Chiron. That means whatever starts during the eclipse is going to take at least a one year cycle to complete its lesson to fruition. Of course, you're going to complete many lessons during this eclipse. So there's certain factors to consider. And these factors are about becoming aware of your own shadow. Chiron is about your core wound. And this is requiring you to shed certain toxic relationships, to set maybe a toxic situation, something that's been outdated, something that's been driven by your pathological need to protect yourself in order to stay in a certain comfort zone, to stay in a certain environment. And Chiron is going to highlight shame, guilt, feeling guilty that you finally do the right thing, that you do the healthy thing and get out of that situation. Because with Chiron, we are dealing with the psychological issue of repetition compulsion. We're dealing with a psychological defense mechanism that because we are so used to this environment, we are so used to this behavior, that we have no idea what would happen if we stop. That we have no idea what would happen if we let go of the situation, this relationship, so we are scared. So we allow fear to run the show. And in order to keep ourselves in a situation that is predictable, that is controllable, with a foreseeable future, where we know exactly what's going to happen next, even if that thing is negative, to have control, we, our subconscious, meaning ourselves, meaning our shadow, will use guilt and shame to tyrannically keep us in a box. In this box, 
is the Saturn theme of Chiron. Because Chiron has two themes. One is Saturn, trying to control everything, to make it predictable, to commit to a certain behavior. So this behavior becomes rigid. And this is what we call character armoring. Character armoring is a psychological overlay that is inside the cells of your body. Your body holds on to this to this rigid defense, to this contraction on a cellular level. It holds on to the mucus, to the shit show, to the swamp, to the dam, in order to keep you in a box, to enslave you, so that you do not dare to break out of codependent or fake dynamics, which your environment around you is rewarding you to stay in. So your environment is mentally ill, therefore it will reward the Chiron in your natal chart. Why do I say that? Well, because wherever you have Chiron in your natal chart is where you keep yourself down, where you hide yourself, where you go into a certain fight, flight, fawn or freeze response, which is a repetition compulsion in the reptile brain, to maintain a karma, to maintain an environment, to maintain a certain type of person, a certain type of relationship, a certain type of career, a certain type of addiction, coping mechanism, whatever it is that you're trying to keep, you will keep depending where Karen is in the data chat. Of course, because this is a global current transit, it's going to happen in a, di a different house, depending what kind of ascendant you have in your natal chart. So check your ascendant of this current transit. But also, it's going to highlight your natal Chiron. So look up where your Chiron is. Because it's going to remind you of that individually. Because Chiron is going to be connection with the sun and the moon, meaning it's going to be illuminating whatever shadows you carry. These shadows, other people are subconsciously interacting with them. And people who are mentally ill on the same wavelength as you are, they will be attracted to you because your defense mechanism is compatible with their toxic behavior. Which is why Chiron in the natal chart is a magnet for what kind of toxicity you will attract in the person's life. So wherever you have Chiron, this kind of toxicity is going to be exposed through this Chiron transit. And this is why it's such a significant event, because the solar eclipse is highlighting how to get rid of blockages in your body, in your instincts, in your desires, in your aggression. Because Chiron is specifically in Aries, so the archetype of the fool, the emperor, somebody who asserts his will aggressively, independently and nonchalantly, is going to be the gateway to success if you want to get rid of an old blockage. So anybody who is encountering guilt, shame, uncertainty, confusion, they will benefit the most from an emperor kind of energy. So this is the energy that you have to step into to have the right weapon, the right equipment to succeed through the quest in the dungeon, which is the battle rate, a.k.a. the solar eclipse. Now, as I mentioned before, in the beginning, a battle rate is only going to be won by those who have the right equipment, the right weapons. And the weapons are dictated by the sign that this eclipse occupies. So Aries is about the weapons of aggression, domination. It's about asserting your will. It's about pushing onward. So people who do not push, people who compromise, people please, try to wait things out, be patient with others, try to be diplomatic. They are the, they are the wrong members of the death rate. They will be the ones who are left behind doing this transit. Left behind, literally, <laughs> because the south node is in Libra. Because this eclipse, why is it an eclipse? 
because the sun and moon are in a new moon conjunction with the north node in 19 degrees. So north node, sun, moon and Chiron are in the exact conjunction. Meaning that the south node will be in Libra. So also check where you have Libra in the natal chart because that's the thing you need to leave behind to succeed with a quest. So if there's something uh, that is represented by the house, by a keyword that the self-node occupies, that is what you have to get rid of. If you do not get rid of this thing, if you do not know what you need to get rid of, then you will also fail in this quest. I don't make the rules. This is just how it works. So this is why the vast majority of people will, of course, fail <laughs> because the vast majority of people have no idea about psychology. They have no idea about spirituality. They have no idea that even an eclipse is happening. They don't even know that Chiron is conjunction with the sun and moon with the sky. They don't know what Chiron is about. They don't. They also don't know that Chiron represents the wounded healer, which represents the homeopath, which represents the doctor that swallows the medicine, takes it, knowing that he's going to suffer, but does it anyways, knowing that that's what he has to do, even though it's not going to feel good. Because people don't know that, they're going to avoid the poison, which is the remedy. They're going to avoid the pain and the suffering. So they're going to try to stay in their comfort zone, having no idea that they're being played by the shadow. And the shadow, how does it play you? Because you don't know what's going on. You don't know what you're supposed to be doing. You don't know enough information to take action. So your ego, aka your sense of self, your individuality, if it lacks information to take action, if it lacks assurance, if it lacks validation, it's not going to take action. It's going to stay stuck. So it's going to repeat a certain fight, flight, freeze or front response during this transit. This is going to happen for a relationship of some sort. This could happen in your career, but this could happen also in communication. Because Mercury is also in retrograde during this eclipse. It's also conjunction. This whole stellium, all of these aspects in the eclipse transit. So Mercury is going to show you certain blockages in your mobility, in your ability to move, to figure things out, to understand what's happening. Which is why I'm making this video. So you can actually remove these communication blockages that you have. If you do not know how to resolve a certain situation, it's because there is a new beginning happening or about to happen. And the new beginning requires you to let go of a rigid old behavior. So the south note in the whole shebang represents a significant relationship in the area that the south node occupies in your natal chart during this transit on the 8th of April, which is going to go through a death. There's going to be a destruction, a tower moment collectively for most people. And this tower moment is going to require you to make a decision. This decision is going to make you feel frozen. Maybe it's going to make you feel like you're weighing the cons and pros of a situation to strategically come up with a way to solve it. If it does, it's because you're living in the past and that's the wrong weapon to win the quest because that rep represents Libra. So anybody who's trying to come up with a strategy, who's trying to come up with a specific... Uh, all-inclusive, cooperative, uh, diplomatic, rational, logical, fake, self-compromising, self-negating, self-defeating strategy to overcome the certain problem in your life, whatever problem you have right now, is going to be the wrong strategy. So do not do that. Because if you do try to do something in the Libra way, Whatever it is that you're trying to do, you will lose, guaranteed, 100%. 100%. The, the eclipse is such a significant event. It happens only once. 
in this year of 2024 is going to be so radical in its energetic blueprint, in its intensity, it's not going to allow you to stay in the past because the power of the sun with the moon combined with Chiron is going to be conjunction the north node to fulfill your destiny, which is to become equipped with the archetype of the emperor, wherever the north node occupies your chart. So, for example, for me personally, the north node occupies my 10th house in astrology because I have a cancer rising. So because 10th house is in Aries, the emperor has to emerge in the house of public affairs, public reputation, status, recognition, meaning that this is in the upper half of my chart. Anything in the upper half is quite visible. So there's going to be an interaction with somebody else. Somebody else is going to become aware of it. Right now, I have multiple people. Pretty much everybody I'm interacting with is aware of a significant emperor <laughs> uh, event that I'm asserting in my life. If you have the North Node in Aries in the lower half of your chart during this eclipse, then it is going to be more private. Doesn't necessarily involve another person. It can, but it doesn't have to. If you have the North Node also in one of the water element houses, 4, 8, or 12, chances are very, very high. There's going to be a private affair. And the Emperor has to be expressed internally. However, if it's in an external house, let's say houses 7, 11, 10, or mm, to a lesser degree, 1 in 5, then somebody else has to see your emperor. The other houses, it doesn't have to. But this is important to understand. Because like I said in the beginning, there's prerequisites to fulfill the quest, which is the April eclipse. Now, if for whatever reason, you do not understand what you are supposed to be doing at this time, or if you belong to a very small minority of people, who doesn't seem to have anything going on in their life, <laughs> which, um, sorry to say, but how is that possible? Because if nothing is happening for you, I would be worried. Because if you do not know what is happening in nature around you, if you're not aware of your environment, if you're not aware of the signs, the messages, the events, the synchronicities, the patterns in your life happening right now. In other words, if you are asleep, if you're numb, if you're dissociated, if you're disconnected, then you are most definitely going to fail this quest. And you will perhaps, in your apathy, apathy will think that, oh, it doesn't matter. I don't need some drama to happen in my life, especially if you are narcissistically inclined, then um, I have a very, very low image of you. And I personally believe that you are avoiding yourself and you are operating from a shadow. And this shadow complex is also known as the shadow complex of, of the escapee or somebody who is a perfectionist who is afraid of their own subconscious to such a degree that they're not even allowing themselves to see what's happening inside of them so that, 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 that they can narcissistically portray themselves as I don't have any problems, I don't have any drama, I don't have anything to work on. So you can ignore the quest, so you can stay stuck, frozen in a pathological armoring defense which says I'm always right. I'm always good. I'm already healed. So this is, of course, a very typical response that you find in um, also spiritual circuits, especially, especially spiritual communities, where there's a lot of bypassing going on, a lot of positivity, positive thinking, you know, this kind of nonsense. Also things like 
bring your bad vibes out of here because this is good vibes only. If you think negatively, negative things are going to happen for you, blah, 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 blah. So in other words, where people are trying to suppress you and if you buy into that kind of program, if you believe that negative thinking is going to lead to negative events, you're not going to enjoy this eclipse. Actually, the eclipse is going to, perhaps if you're lucky, bring something negative to you in a certain tower moment to shake you out of that fucking delusion. Because ain't nobody got time for that. We're in the age of 2024. We have had enough time for people to figure out by this point that positive thinking does not lead to positive experiences. It's positive alignment with yourself, being your true self, even if it is negative in expression, that is going to lead to positive events. So by allowing yourself to feel what's really there, to see your own shadow, to see how you've been playing yourself, to see how you've been the unconscious cooperative to your own self-destruction. That's going to lead to positive events, not positive thinking. But of course, I don't need to say that. There's so many things that you need to know about this eclipse that um, I'm going to also expose in a little, a little minute. So let's make a little summary. This eclipse is about shedding of a toxic relationship. So there's going to be a relationship of some sort for most people. Yeah, If you don't have a relationship at the moment, if you're like in a hermit mode, or if, you, if you're frozen, if you are a fake person, so to speak. So if you are one of those people who will fail the quest, then no, you will not shed the toxic relationship, uh, or you will not shed some kind of problem that is going to appear in your life, and you will go into your cocoon, pretending that everything is fine. Number one, if if you are healthy and if you are part of the people who are in the quest, you will come out of your cocoon, you will come out of a freeze response and you will confront the issue because you're not a coward, right? You are the emperor, which you're supposed to be if you want to win the quest. Number two, you will become aware of a shadow playing out in your life. So there could be a core wounding that happened in your, in your childhood in which a pathological dynamic was playing out of a parent, in which a parent told you, shut it down, stop it, punish that behavior, because when you are being authentic, I do not like it. I cannot handle it. So it's going to highlight something in your life in which you've not been honest with yourself. This could be minor, but uh, really, <laughs> I don't think anything should be minor during this eclipse. If it's minor, Maybe you've already been doing most of the work and you're just coming to an end of operation, but uh, yeah. Whatever the core wound is going to be, is going to be something from your childhood, something that maybe you carried your whole life, something that you've been avoiding, something that you thought you could get away with, something that you thought, since you don't know how to handle it, since you don't know what to do about it, you're just going to keep pushing it away, hoping that at some point it's going to end. It's not going to end until you address it directly, which is going to happen during this eclipse. Number three, there's going to be some kind of codependent or false dynamic in your life. So maybe there's a situation with a coworker, a friend, a colleague, somewhere where you've been hiding yourself. And something is going to happen, which is going to come to, to trigger you to get out of hiding. Now, this could be an argument. This could be a disagreement. This could be some kind of a decision that you have to make in which you're not sure. Should I really entertain this drama? The answer to that question is absolutely yes. Please do entertain this drama because this eclipse is an Aries 
Yeah, this is about the drama. This is not about avoiding the drama. So if you're trying to avoid some kind of drama, do not do that. Because again, you will fail the quest if you do that. Number four, shedding a false self overlay. So there's many overlays in the body, which is going to keep the body hostage or enslaved in order to fit into the family system. So in my family constellation therapy, I talk about this to my clients. You have a certain mimic. It's a shadow persona. It plays out like a robotic defense mechanism, rigid, automated, in the body like a computer virus. And this computer virus asserts a certain behavior in order to cope with the environment, to avoid triggering a pathological, mentally ill person's defense mechanisms. To avoid those triggers, it will use fear, guilt, and shame to keep you in line. This is going to be highlighted during this eclipse. So if somebody or something is making you aware of the fact that you are afraid of triggering that person, of triggering that event, that negative reaction, you are dealing most likely with a false self overlay. And this is going to express itself through a body sensation, through a negative contraction, a fear hiding response in the body which could express itself in a certain defense reaction. So you're going to be triggered in some kind of way and you may go into fight, fight, fawn or freeze to respond to that situation. If you do, you have to take assertive action and you have to do the opposite of whatever it is that this false self overlay, this defense mechanism, this trigger is telling you to do. Yeah, no matter what it is, I don't really care what it is. If you have some kind of trigger happening during this event, you must do the opposite. If you do, you will win the quest. Number five, exposing false belief systems that suppress instincts, desire, and aggression. So that's really what this eclipse is going to do. There's going to be a belief system in your life. This is going to be about morals, ethics, rules, justice, quote unquote, because the South Node is in Libra. The South Node represents ethical issues. You're going to have to let go of an ethical dilemma in your life. So maybe you believed that in order to be a good person, you have to do certain things. Like for example, I get a lot of scrutiny online because I talk about certain things like engaging with a drama instead of avoiding it. <laughs> you know, these kind of things. There are certain belief systems in people which keep them in rigid behaviors in which you do the same thing over and over again because you believe that if you don't do the same thing over and over again, that you will be a bad person. Why? Because you will feel guilty. You will have a guilty conscience if you do something else. So the South of the Libra is going to highlight that. Wherever the South not occupies in your chart during this eclipse, that house is going to show you the ethical dilemma. So for example, I have a South not in the fourth house in Libra. That means the fourth house is going to highlight an unconscious family dynamic that I had from my past. An unconscious dynamic that actually came up during this eclipse for me was that um, I had a dysfunctional belief system subconsciously. <laughs> you don't choose your belief systems. You don't kid yourself with your positive thinking. Your body chooses your belief systems and your behavior enforces it, which means your behavior is also the one that's going to change your belief systems, not your thinking. Yeah. You can be rational, you can be logical, you can think this, you can know this, but unless you actually make a different action, unless you show up in reality with this, your belief system is not going to be, be any different because the body is going to recreate the behaviors that you put into it, like a computer. So what came up for me was that in my relationships with other people, I... I, hi I was hiding my disapproval. 
to a certain behavior that felt bad for me. Yeah? Felt bad for me. Not knowing if it's actually bad, but it just felt bad. So, because I had the belief that just because I feel bad about something, that doesn't automatically mean that, uh, that it needs to be changed. Because I had this pathological wrong belief, it was playing out in my relationships. It was shown to me, and I was shedding it during this lunar eclipse. So I was re already completing the first part of the quest. The quest of the eclipse is, pa is split in two parts. First, during the lunar period, which is the full moon period, until the 8th of April, you're going to have to shed something. You're going to have to let go of something. And after the 8th of April, you have to start something new. And once those two things are completed, the quest is finished. And the quest will be finished completely, not on the 8th of April, like many believe, but actually on the full moon that follows 14 days after the eclipse. So, number six. This eclipse is going to expose communication blockages. Communication blockages could involve another party, which for whatever reason is choosing to remain in the Libra South Node. They're choosing to be fake with you, Right, that is Libra self not. They're choosing to be strategic with you. They're trying to play you. They're trying to manipulate you. And you will be forced to find out that you're being manipulated. If you're not becoming aware of this, the sun, conjunction the northern and Aries, the sun represents illumination. The Aries represents the third eye. The third eye is about detecting lies. That is why it's opposite to the sign of Libra, because Libra is about negotiation. Libra is about contracts, agreements. Essentially, Libra is about lying and scheming and strategizing. Like it or not, I don't make the rules. This is astrology. So, somebody will come to lie to you, and they will think that they are perfectly in the right to do so. Yes. That person will believe, because they are operating in the South Node, they are operating in dysfunctional belief systems, which they are not even aware of, like I mentioned before, that playing you, manipulating you, is being a good person. And that you, your job will be to find out that you believe that you are a good person for playing a facade to meet the facade. So you will feel the need to strategically respond to the manipulation. So maybe you will try to explain your situation rationally and logically to the other party. Maybe you'll try to come with a compromise. Maybe you'll try to be nice or diplomatic and reasonable because the other person triggered you. But the other person is using manipulation to try to play you. So they, can be, so they can play the victim should you respond aggressively, like the emperor, to finish the quest, yeah, to fulfill it. So they will try to prevent you from fulfilling the quest by manipulating you and playing the victim. Do not fall for this. If this happens in your life, you must, and you must, I have to really emphasize this, react as the emperor or even the fool in the tarot. So the fool, first of all, he doesn't care that bad things happen to him. He just does whatever he wants, number one. Because, like it or not, that shit show that you're going to interact with, that facade that is going to try to play you, they're going to try to give you negative consequences for having an appropriate reaction. Because they're operating in the self note, they're representing... The second group, meaning the group of losers, yeah, that is going to be not finishing this quest. They're not going to win this quest. They're going to be left behind. By who? By the winners. Are you going to be a winner? Or are you going to join those losers in their strategy, in their manipulation, to maintain a facade so that they can think they're a good person and you can think that you're a good person, but neither of you win? Okay, 
So if you understand that, then you will have won the sixth part of a quest, which is exposing communication blockages. Number seven. In order to fulfill the quest, which is this eclipse, in order to come out on top as a winner, not a loser, you have to get out of your own way. You have to recognize that this whole eclipse is going to highlight an issue in which you've been playing the good guy. Yeah, you've been playing good cop. Whatever situation in which you're playing good cop, which represents the south node, check the south node in your chart, you're going to have to play the bad cop. And you're not going to like it because it's going to go out of your comfort zone. Bad cop means you're going to have to ask uncomfortable questions. You're going to have to trigger somebody's defense mechanisms. You're going to have to maybe even trigger yourself. Maybe you are the one who is triggered. Who knows? In any case, the only way to get out of your way is to react regressively and assertively to the situation. I mean, you can probably guess at this point that there's a repeating theme all throughout this eclipse and it's pretty straightforward and pretty simple. However, it's also going to highlight anger issues in your life where you've been afraid of yourself. The sun is going to be eclipsed Okay, in Aries. Aries represents courage. Aries represents overcoming of enemies. Aries represents hostility, war, conflict, survival, presence, the self. It represents ego battles. It represents combat, which means because the sun is eclipsed, the wounded warrior is going to be highlighted in your chat. You're going to feel like I'm just, I'm just not comfortable fighting the situation. You're going to, maybe, some of you, not all of you, but most of you, will get into a situation in which you may feel afraid of yourself. Afraid that there's something wrong with you. Yeah? You will feel like there's a flaw inside of your personality. There's a flaw in how you are fundamentally in your, in your core. Because remember, Khan represents core wounds and the sun represents the core personality. That's going to be eclipsed. It's going to be dark and so you're like, oh, what is wrong with me? I need to hide, hide, hide. Do not fall for it. If you feel that there's something wrong with you, this is going to be the exposing of an old pattern. Something you've been doing for a very, very long time. And it's an illusion. It's completely false. Why? Because Karen is about repetition compulsion. It's about playing out something because you feel that if you don't do this, you are the bad guy. It's not about there's something wrong with you. It's about the fact that you don't deserve justice. You don't deserve to be treated right. So there's going to be a situation in your life in which you are indeed not treated right. And you're going to feel like maybe it's your fault. Maybe you just don't deserve a good relationship, a good career, a good outcome. Maybe what is happening to you is your own karma and you deserve it. If you believe that, you belong to the group of losers. You're not going to fulfill the quest. That's why it's so important to know this stuff. However, if you understand what you've been doing and how you have attracted certain situations in your life, how you have repeated certain themes, it's because Subconsciously, you believed that that was what you're supposed to be doing, that you deserve what is happening to you. And of course, if you believe that you deserve it, it's going to happen to you again. And this is subconscious. So this is going to be highlighted, absolutely, for everybody in some way. So, <clears throat> number eight, 
There's going to be a death of a significant relationship, a career, or a significant behavior in the area that the self that occupies in your own chat. Now, I don't really need to elaborate too much on this. Uh, a tower moment has already been experienced during this eclipse season, during the lunar eclipse. It's not going to happen during the solar eclipse. During the solar eclipse, you've already finished the first part of the quest. If you didn't have a tower moment, then you already failed the job, and sorry, not sorry, when you belong to the group of losers. But if you have let go of something, if you have lost something, then good. You have succeeded with the first part of the quest. Congratulations. Number nine. There is going to be a new beginning after the solar eclipse of a significant shift in your personality. A personality trait that you always had, but you've been hiding it. The sun is going to be eclipsed, so it's going to, it's going to become aware of what you've been hiding. That thing about you, that nasty thing that everybody told you, to keep it down, to keep it quiet, to keep it hidden. You're going to have a new beginning about that. Finally, you're stepping into this if you succeed the second half of the quest. Now, this could be minor. And for some people, this could even happen unconsciously. You may not even be aware that this is happening to you. But in some way, the archetype of the emperor is going to help you to bring out something from your childhood. It's almost like you feel a sense of freshness again, a sense of joy, a sense of happiness. Something is going to happen during this eclipse, which makes you feel like it's actually good to be alive. Because if it feels bad to be alive, it's because you are not being alive. <laughs> you are dead inside. You are an empty person. And you belong to the group of losers who is going to be left behind during this eclipse. <laughs> but if you do, do the inner work. And you look at where you have been hiding, where you have been participating, cooperating with your own self-destruction, then you will succeed. And you will feel that by showing your wound, exposing your wound, being vulnerable, assertively and aggressively, to let everybody in, to your darkness, not too much, because we don't want to overwhelm you, you are a baby after all. And if I throw you into the cold water, you're going to be quite in the shock, right? So a lot of people are going to be thrown into the cold water at this time. So it's not going to be comfortable for you at all. Do not expect it to be comfortable. Because if it's comfortable, go into the group of losers where you belong. Number 10. There's going to be a collective de-armoring that happens in certain parts of the body. Now, of course, this whole eclipse is going to happen in the sign of Aries. Now, what I mean by the term de-armoring, unless you are a robot, unless you're a narcissist or a psychopath, or you're just really mentally ill and there's something really wrong with you, in which case you don't even belong on this channel. Well, you, of course, you're welcome on this channel, but really... If you are connected to the cycles of nature, which you should be, then unconsciously, deep inside the cells of your body, because your body is a part of nature, so it's not going to be an island, it's going to be purging on a deeper level. Now, if you don't notice any symptoms, any physical symptoms, any sickness during this time, that's fine. Don't worry about it. You don't have to notice it in order for it to be happening. But there's going to be a de-armoring of the following channels. The third eye, the adrenal glands, and the circulatory system, which emphasizes the blood. Why? Because these parts of the body are ruled by Mars. There could also be a, a, a change of your brain of some sort, of your thinking. Yeah, if you've had been repeating thoughts, looping thoughts, you've had a lot of overthinking lately, of course this is part of the Aries Mercury retrograde. 
but it's also connected to the shedding and the purging of old patterns. Because, you see, Aries rules defense against hostile forces, overcoming of enemies, because it's ruled by Mars. Mars represents the protector. He represents the warrior archetype. So the warrior archetype is represented by certain parts in the body, like the third eye, which is the identity. The identity in the forehead, it's also ruling the hair. So that is why people who lose the hair, they feel like they're losing their identity. It also rules the eyes, which is why people that lose their eyesight, they feel like they're becoming disconnected from the environment, from other people, from life. And it also rules the seeing of illusions. Seeing yourself, seeing other people, visually, instantly. Not like, oh, I need to strategize, I need to think about their perspective, I need to be a Libra. No, Aries is instant. So these parts of the body are going to be activated. Why? Because the parts of the body that react, yes, that are reactive, whether you like it or not, these parts of the body want to come online. They want to become more free. So that's what's going to happen to you on some level. How? Well, maybe something is going to trigger you and something is going to force you to behave a little bit out of your character, <laughs> a little bit uh, reactive. If you do, again, you will feel like you're being thrown into the cold water, but do not worry. This is actually part of a purging. And it may cause a little bit of uh, discomfort. Yeah, it's going to be not so nice. What you have to do is you have to understand why this is happening. Remember, this eclipse is split in two groups. A group of losers, which are people who are operating in the Libra mode of strategy, manipulation, hiding from confrontation, avoiding the elephant in the room, avoiding the battle, waiting, being patient, responding instead of reacting. Yes, that belongs to the loser group. Loser, loser, loser group. And the winner group belongs to the, per to the people who are reacting quickly, assertively, directly. Whether they look like a fool or not, doesn't matter. That's not what it's about. It's not about appearances. It's not about your ego. Yeah, you think Aries is ego. Aries is the real ego, the true ego, not the false ego. False ego is, oh, but I'm hurting their feelings and I need to maintain my facade because I look like a bad cop. Uh, I mean, like a bad person. So I don't want to be a bad person. So I need to maintain this mimic, this facade of, oh, I'm actually a good person because I'm hiding myself then you belonged into the group of losers. So don't be a loser. Recognize what is happening, why it's happening, because you're being triggered to become a winner. If you're not being triggered, you are already a loser. Maybe you are destined to be a loser. Maybe that's your choice. I don't care. Anyways, this is really the eclipse in a nutshell. Of course, I can say more about this eclipse. I can bring up this chart, for example. So let's take a little look at this chart. So if you've been listening this long, I'm surprised if you've even been paying attention. But uh, yeah, so this is the chart. So at 6.21 p.m. Universal Time, there's going to be an exact Kazimi, an exact conjunction between the Sun, Moon and Chiron. And they're going to be in a four degree orbit, conjunction with the North Node, which is why it's an eclipse. And Mercury in retrograde in Aries will also be conjunction with that. However, Mercury will also be conjunction with the asteroid Odin, which is the Lord of Frenzy, which is connected to wanderers, rebel rousers, troublemakers, and clairvoyants. People who have visions of a future of what kind of aggression, aka shit show, is going to react to them next. So they can be in charge of the trouble that's going to come next. So there's going to be an awareness here. 
doing voice clips. It's like you already know what's going to happen next. It's like you already know what's coming. Maybe you know the toxic dynamics in your life. Maybe you know what you're doing wrong. Maybe you know what's wrong with you, which is actually you just suppressing yourself. Because the life force, the presence, the co-regulation, the desire function, the anger, the defense, the protection. All of this is ruled by Aries. So all of this is going to be the main focus here. And of course, there's also a coming Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. Jupiter is right now going to be in 19 degrees of Taurus with a 21 degrees of Uranus. So you're already going to feel this. What is going to happen there? Wherever Jupiter-Uranus conjuncts in your house, I mean, whatever house it occupies in your chart, that's where you're going to be catapulted. Like, my goodness, what's happening here? You're going to be blown up, basically, in that area. So what happened for me, personally? I have a Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in the 11th house in Taurus. 11th house is the house of friends. Well, I've been losing multiple friends <laughs> doing this transit. But I've also gotten many new contacts and I've been thinking that I should expand by posting into many more groups. Because so far I've only posted in the astrology groups online for my business and my services and my readings and my posts. But I think I should expand and get into the psychology groups, into the codependency, narcissism, and perhaps into some other groups. Let's see. In any case, I was thinking also of expanding into the German groups and posting some German posts because I don't get any German clients, even though I live in Germany. And I thought it would be a good idea to get some German friends that I could actually visit because all the people I'm dealing with are online. And that is why the 11th house, which I'm thinking about, which is online, is ruled by the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction for me personally. So Jupiter-Uranus basically is about doing something new. Changing things up in a big way for years to come. For years to come. So whatever you're doing now, please look at this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. What house does it occupy in your chart? You need to know this. Because you want to be on board of energies. You want to cash in. Yeah? You want to be a magician. Or you want to be a loser. Waiting for things to happen to you. Just reacting unconsciously. Not knowing what the fuck is happening around you. You want to be a loser or a winner. So get hip on the astrology. Know what's happening. So this is happening. And then also. Um, there's going to be a Mars-Saturn conjunction. My goodness. These trends are intense, yeah? So the depositor, this is very important, so listen up. The depositor of the solar eclipse is Mars. Mars is in Pisces, Mars is debilitated. So this is quite dark. That means your aggression <laughs> is going to feel very weird. Like, do I really fight this? I actually just want to make peace. Why do I have to be part of the drama? How, how do I deal with the situation? How do I approach this in a way that leads to positive outcomes? Because Saturn represents divine karma, divine retribution. So, are you going to be the person who is going to bring divine retribution to somebody else? Or is retribution coming to you as a loser? That is going to be decided. On this eclipse and furthermore because Saturn represents negative consequences for not only bad actions but also good actions by people who should not be your people this is something to keep in mind because Saturn in its shadow not in its good way in its shadow represents false guilt complexes victim complexes feeling like oh no now they're reacting negatively due to me. Now I'm losing my job. Now everything is falling apart. It's my fault. Your fault? Maybe that's what's, what's supposed to be happening. Maybe the negative consequences in your life are the result of good action. So, there's going to be divine justice later down the line. 
because Saturn is the lord of time. So, being conjunction Mars, which is like, I need the good result now, as the depositor of the eclipse, there's not going to be good results for anybody right now. Don't kid yourself. The good results are going to come later. Later. Yeah. You, you're simply going to do what's right for you. You're going to do the right thing. You're going to be part of a group of winners. And you're going to lo leave all those motherfucking losers behind who are in the way of Mars. Of you and getting what you want. Yourself, your identity. Identity, yes. Identity is what do I want? What do I like? What do I not want? What do I not like? So I can separate it like a sword of justice, Mars, and cut it and separate it, because this is a separation function psychologically, out of your life. Okay? Because that is how you protect yourself. That is why Mars is called a protector. But it's clashing here with Saturn. And Saturn is also a protector, which is why both of these planets are called malefics. Malefic planets are always going to bring something negative into your life. Why? Because they want to bring you something positive through negative action. Yes, love and light community, I just destroyed you with some facts of psychology in astrology for the fact that Mars represents actions that are considered negative by people around you. But they are the correct actions. Otherwise, your Mars couldn't even function. Because the only way that Mars and Saturn can function in the nature chart is through negative actions. Like it or not like it. I don't make the rules. Why? Simply. Because Mars is about separation. It's about conflict. It's about troubles, divorces, separations, confrontations, anger, defense, war. All the things that we like to avoid because we live in a society of cowards. In a society that considers Mars to be a malefic planet. <laughs> a malefic, really? To get what you want is malefic? I don't think so. And then Saturn. Saturn is malefic because it represents boundaries. Yes, boundaries. Meaning saying no. Oh, yes, of course, it's a malefic thing to say no to somebody. Oh, no, how dare you actually make a boundary? How dare you? And that is why somebody is going to make some big ass boundaries at this time. Don't make the boundaries with yourself. Make the boundaries with your false self. The false self it is trying to repeat the past. Whatever the past represents, whatever manipulation you use, even if it's domination. In some cases, you know, like, you know, I'm talking to a wide audience here. So there are some, very few, of course, minority. But there are narcissistic individuals who actually do use domination as a form of manipulation, who play the victim, who try to guilt trip other people who say, oh, now you're reacting like this. Ha ha ha. You be mad at me. Now you, see, you show me how mad you are. So they poke you. They provoke you. And then they say, ha ha, you are out of control. <laughs> Hopefully you are out of control. Because if you are, then Mars is functioning properly. And you are actually part of a winner group, not the loser group. You are part of a loser group. Why? And when? You are part of a loser group when... You hide your aggression for fear of negative consequences. When that aggression is not manipulation, when that aggression is not coming out of a victim stance, when that aggression is not coming out of, of a position of weakness, but of strength and assertiveness and truth. And of course, justice is represented by this whole Libra, Aries axis, which is why the ruler of Aries is Mars. And Mars is how we execute. It represents policemen. It represents law and order. And Saturn is actually order. Sa Saturn is actually the maintenance, the keeping of the law. To keep the law, you have to assert yourself in some kind of way. 
Whether you have to do it individually is up to you. But this is not going to be a pleasant event, I'm going to tell you. Because this is going to ask you to make a commitment towards yourself. Towards how you want to actually defend yourself in your relationships. Are you operating for, from a fight, fi uh, flight, fall and freeze response? Are you operating from the shadow of Mars, which is the reptile brain? Which actually is just a suppressed Mars, believe it or not. Operating unconsciously. Or are you operating from the frontal lobe, the third eye, which is the proper Mars, where Mars actually belongs? Are you being rational, assertive, clear in your thinking, cool-headed, knowing exactly what is happening, why it's happening? If you don't, it's also because Mars is debilitated here. Mars is in Pisces. <laughs> what do you expect? Do you really expect things to be crystal clear for you? But if they are, well, you you are one of the top players. You, how do I call it? You are a main carry. <laughs> because if you go into a dungeon with a battle rate and you got the whole squad of team players, there are certain players who got the best equipment, who got the best stats. So if you're seeing things very clearly at this time and you don't have any confusion at all, you're one of the main players. If you're not one of the main players, are you at least trying to become it? Because if you're going to be one in the end in the anyways, then who am I to judge you? So, um, this is basically it. You have the main trends of this uh, whole eclipse. Hmm. It's not many squares happening, is there? <laughs> Not really. Everything is clustered so close together. You could see all the planets. If somebody is born at this time, they have everything together in their chart. Does this have any special meaning, by the way? It means there is a very specific focus going on right now. The focus is on going inwards. Heal yourself. See what's wrong with you. How you've been fooling yourself, playing yourself, manipulating yourself. How you've been playing around the problem, trying to circumvent it, trying to find another way, going in circuits, just so you don't have to deal with the elephant in the room. The problem you've been avoiding for a very long time. The problem that you, you know it's there, but it's out of your comfort zone. It's drama that you're trying to avoid. But it's drama that is going to free you from the drama and not the suppression of this or that. So whatever behavior that you have, whatever shock that happens at this time, whatever tower moment comes, if you feel like you're being thrown into the bathtub and with a baby in the bathwater out of the bathroom and the whole house is going to explode in your face, don't worry about it. As long as you know what you're doing, as long as you know that good actions take time to be rewarded. And that is the whole point of Saturn. Saturn is actually in rulership of this realm. This is a karmic collective event. Karma is the main theme of this time. So everything I just told you, or the summary I made, is just about karma, really, at the end of the day. So Saturn is the one you want to look up to. Saturn is, di is dignified here in his sign of joy, his conjunction, the ruler of the eclipse, Mars, in a debilitated position. Meaning Saturn is fully in charge of what's happening here, not Mars. Even though Mars is the ruler, Saturn cashes in on that. And Neptune is depositing the Saturn in its own sign. So there's a lot of illusions right now, a lot of belief systems that we're looking at, a lot of subconscious drives that are running the show, subconscious mechanisms, behaviors. And the vast majority of people will have no idea that any of this is going on. They will belong into the group of the losers who have no idea what they're doing. So if you're shedding people, if you're having fights, 
if you're having conflicts, if you're having whatever kind of drama, thank goodness. Because you're getting rid of the losers in your life and you're stepping into the winner. That's all you need to know really at the end of the day. Because this is going to highlight many guilt and shame complexes for lots of people. Lots of people are going to feel bad about doing the right thing. Do not fall for it. You are on the right track. So I'm going to look at um, questions, anything. Mm. Yeah. In any case, if you're wondering why there are certain blockages in your communication, if there's blockages in your, in your thinking, it's because the rational brain is no longer working. Is, this is not a time to be rational in uh, terms of anal analysis and thinking over and over and over with the same issue, unless, unless the, the goal is to take action and to see what happens and learn from the experience. This is about learning outside of your comfort zone. Not to stay in the box and learn as much as you can about the box so you can get better in a slightly bigger box. That's not the goal here. The goal here is to, to address the thing you've always wanted to address, but you didn't know how to address and you're still thinking, how do I do it? How do I? It's not about the how. It's just about the doing, the taking action being vulnerable, being flawed, accepting the fact that you don't know what you're doing most of the time. Most people right now, they have no idea how to go about the situation. You don't need to have all the answers to take action. I, is there going to be negative consequences for learning from your mistakes because you're making mistakes? Is there going to be failure? Yes. There's going to be lots of failure at this time. But the more comfortable you can be with failure, then there's going to be more rewards down the line later. That's actually how I look at it. Because we cannot let fear get in the way of things. We cannot let... Uh, we cannot allow self-doubt to cripple us, because self-doubt can cripple even the greatest warrior. And that's what it's about, right? The wounded warrior, at the end of the day. So if you want to know more about the archetype of the wounded warrior, you can check out my YouTube channel. I have videos about Mars, the warrior archetype, and the wounded warrior. You can check these videos on my YouTube channel. And you can also check my video about Saturn, making boundaries with reality. Because Saturn is also going to be very important at this time. The Saturn and Pisces transit is conjunction exactly with the depositor of this eclipse. So don't leave it out. Make boundaries. Be harsh. Be truthful. Because if you're not, if you're being a pussy, if you're being soft, if you're being nice and sweet, there's going to be negative consequences for you later. Maybe not now. Maybe now you, you will feel in your little bubble safe and secure. But Saturn is coming for you. At the end of the day, it is coming for all of us. Because it's the Grim Reaper. The Grim Reaper comes for those who are not willing to die. So that they can finally die. Shed their old skin. In any case, if you enjoyed this video, and you like to see more videos like this in the future, please leave a like and subscribe. I really benefit from the boosting of the algorithm. It doesn't cost you anything. And if you're interested in booking a reading, one-on-one, -on -one, a needle chart reading, which is psychological and not just superficial, then you can reach me through Messenger or email at any given time. And you can check out my services in the service section of my photo albums on my page if you're interested to learn more about my services. And you can message me anytime on Messenger if you have any questions about that. You can also get personal readings, collective readings, prediction readings, 
and sinister readings because I do relationship chart readings too. So if you have a new beginning of a relationship at this time, which is very likely to happen actually, you can also check out those services on my page. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.